uh, there's really basically two countries that were were formed by the hand of God. Uh, he moved on people to form the, the land of Israel, right? He, he put his hand upon them on a certain family, and the, the, the country of Israel was formed and has been preserved by the hand of God. And that's for a lot, a lot of years. And then the United States was formed as a Christian nation. But some people today don't accept that fact. They want to take our nation into a different direction. And they want to exclude God from the country and the government and, and our society. And it's not going to work. It can't work. America is blessed because uh, we bless God. We honor God. That is the reasoning. So we have to stick with God. Or else we'll lose this great land that we have today. And uh, it is blessed by God. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you today, we didn't uh, say this prayer, but we're, this is the prayer. It's part of our scripture today. It's Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. And we used to say this prayer during our communion. But we're going to read it here from the, from the Bible. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. And he says here, in this manner, Jesus says, in this manner, pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, do, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, now and forever. Amen. We have a problem in America that is putting people uh, into bondage. I know we claim that we're a free nation. Other nations claim they are free nations. But nations around the world, people around the world are in bondage. Slavery. And that slavery is to sin. Sin has a hold, a grip, a, 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 a chain around many people's necks today. And it's holding them in bondage. And that is our problem that we're facing today. I know sometimes we want to point out different groups of people because they're moving their agenda and it's not a godly agenda. And we like to highlight that. But, and we blame sometimes uh, uh, other people for that. But the problem really is sin. Sin is the issue. And God wants to relieve us from the bondage of sin. Look how terrible sin is. Sin will, will uh, sneak in on you and make a foothold in your life and take you into places that you never thought you'd go. It's awful the way sin is. One little thing, you know, that we start doing that we know is not right, because we know, all of us know right from wrong. It, it tugs at our heart and our minds. We know when we're about to do something wrong, and sometimes we go ahead and do it. And then that little step we take in the wrong direction leads us into a path that is a path of self-destruction. That's where it will take us. I remember hearing a testimony one time from a from a guy in our program, and he part of his testimony was that had I known back when I was like ten or eleven years old, had I known now back then that that first can of beer, that first can of beer, would lead me into a life of alcoholism, drug addiction, robbing stores hurting people, going to prison, in and out of prison. Had I known that, I would have never took that first drink. Mm -hmm. But that's where it started for him. It led him into that path. You know, in our family, the, the Gomez family, uh, my dad says, I cannot have one beer. I cannot. Because he, he, he gave up drinking. Has it been 20 years already? Been a long time. He gave him and my brother Michael. They gave up drinking, and he says, "I cannot not have even one beer." He would go down to Pasuski's house, 
know. <laughs> and uh, and they're over there, and they're still they're still drinking some over there. So they right away offer him a a drink. Hey, uh, you you want a cold one? And my my dad would say no. You know, I said no. I don't drink no more. He said I can't even not have any one. And then one day he went over there and they asked him the same question. Frasio, you want a you want a cold one? He goes, yeah, give me one. Give me a cold one. A cold Pepsi, he said. <laughs> he can't have one. Because in, in the Gomez family, we get addicted too quick. You know, some people can, you know, drink a, a beer and not really bother them, you know. But the Gomez says they got to drink the whole 12 pack, you know. They can't stop. Yeah. We'll buy so that's why you cannot even, we cannot even drink that one, you know, because it leads us down a path. Oh my God, mm. I witnessed it. I saw my brother come home all beat up, bloody, and uh, hair a mess and everything, and coming home dragging himself in because he's been out drinking. And when he's out there drinking, he thinks he's Superman, you know, and they prove him wrong. You know, they beat him up and send him back home, you know. And he get all cleaned up again and head right back out, you know. Self-destruction. Sin. Bad choices in life lead us into a path that will take us to our self-destruction. Yes. See, it's not other people destroying us. Mm -hmm. When we make the choice to be involved in sin, we bring that upon ourselves. It's madness. Why do we do it? We know it's not going to end well. We have to stop it, you know. And that's why there's Jesus. We can come to Jesus. The only remedy to sin is forgiveness. And that comes through Jesus Christ. Let's read the rest of that prayer. We know God said here in the prayer that, uh, you know, we can ask forgiveness. He said, forgive us our trespasses. God wants to forgive us of our trespasses. And look how critical it is. Let's go down to verse 14. If you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your heavenly Father forgive your trespasses. It is critical. In order for us to gain the freedom that God desires for us, we have to be forgiven. And here's where a lot of people struggle. A lot of people think, no, nah, I'm okay. I'm all right. I know about God. You know, I know. He's good. When I get to the end, you know, we'll talk and he'll let me into heaven. You know? That's not the way it works. Amen. We must be forgiven. We cannot enter the kingdom of God without confessing our sin to him and asking him to forgive us. We have to come humbly before our God. We have to. That's the only way. In order to get what God has in store for us, we must be forgiven. And a lot of people are stuck with sin. A real sneaky sin. And it's called pride. We think in our own little mind up here, that 10% that we use, whatever we figured out, <laughs> That little thing up there, we think, I got it under control. No, you don't. You're out of control. Yes. You can only be under control when you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. That's the only time that you can be free. And God is anxiously waiting for us to come to that point. That's why he tolerates all this mess. If I were God, we would not have all this mess right here. I'd have done, wiped it out. You know, but I'm not God. Good for all of us, huh? <laughs> we'll let God be God, <laughs> and we'll come along for the ride. But He's tolerating a lot. He's putting up with a lot of mess because He knows that the only way humanity can truly be free, and that's the gift He has for us, is we must come to Him, repent of our sins, and ask Him to forgive us. Forgiveness is the key. We must be forgiven. We're not going to be free. We might be free because we live in America and we have liberty and, and justice somewhat, I guess. But, you know, we got some sense of freedom here. But that's even under, under fire right now. We don't know what we can count on. 
we're not sure of our judicial system, you know. I mean, a lot of people are getting off scot-free. There's a guy that just got let out of prison. Y'all know what I'm talking about, probably. Mm -hmm. He got let out of prison after he had sexually abused many people, and it was proved in the court of law. Okay? It was proved. He did it. He drugged women and sexually abused them. Proven in the court of law. The judge said yes and sentenced him to, I don't know how many years. But he had money, and he hired lawyers, and they found a technicality. How about that? They found a technicality in our law, mm. and he's out scot-free. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, freedom is, uh, is a good word, and I love freedom, and I love what it stands for, but it gets abused. Amen. Liberty gets abused, yes. and evil uses liberty to promote his agenda. So we're kind of in troublesome ground. We need to continue to pray for America because if America goes, there's not going to be another country rise up like this. Israel right now, you want to count on Israel? Man, they're having trouble over there. Way worse than what we're having. I mean, they are, they have become very authoritarian over there. I mean, they're bringing the, the law down hard over there. You know, they're, they're taking away a lot of freedoms that they used to enjoy over there. You know, so we're still hanging on here in America, and especially here in Texas. <laughs> we're hanging on pretty strong. <laughs> There's a lot of liberty in Texas. Not in New Mexico, a little more restrictive, you know. And go to California, oh boy. A lot of restrictions there, you know. So we have a sense of freedom, but it's, it's being challenged right now. And the enemy is trying to take us down. And he does it by influencing people to... To fall into the temptation so they can sin. And then sin gets a hold of them. And then now he's got them. God wants us to be set free from that. He wants us to be free from sin. Now, I just want real quickly here in the... I think it's, let's see, it's Romans chapter 1, verse 28. And people say that, well, God's too restrictive. You know, just look at all the rules he puts on us. But really, he's trying to save us. He's trying to save us all the heartache and pain that sin will bring into our lives. So he highlights sin by telling us what sin is. You can read the Ten Commandments, right? After church, if you want to, there's a lot of things people get involved with right there. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. All those things are, are bad for humanity. So God says and warns us, don't get involved in this. It's going to be bad for you. And then here, Paul even, even uh, highlights it a little bit more. He says in verse 28 of chapter 1 of Romans, and even as they did not retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to those do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetedness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, mm -hmm. disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. Amen. You know anybody like that? Probably hit a whole bunch of people, huh? Mm -hmm. and, uh, and guess what? We were the likes of them. Huh? <laughs> that was a picture of us. We used to be that. You know? We were making the wrong choices and, and we were dominated by sin. We were a slave to sin at one time. But by the grace of God, He came into our lives and gave us an opportunity to be free from the wages of sin. Yeah, we were going to, to self-destruct. We were going to die way too early. But God came in, convicted us of our sin. And when that conviction came, we looked to Him and we humbled ourselves before Him and we said, God, forgive me. I've made a mess. Please help me to correct this. And He did. And He has that in store for all of humanity. He wants us all to have a good life. When Jesus came into this world, He says, I have come that you may have life. I mean, that's pretty good. We have life. But He went on further than that. He said that you might have it abundantly. Yeah, that's what God has in store for us. 
just getting rid of sin, we get an abundant life. When we get rid of that burden, that, that, that bag of junk that we carry from our past, God says, you don't have to carry that no more. You don't have to answer for that anymore. Jesus paid the price for all of that. He died on the cross to make payment for all of our mistakes. And all we have to do is ask Him to forgive us. I think we got the better part of the deal, don't you? That's how much God loves us. He made it so simple, so simple that we merely have to ask Him to forgive us of our sins. How much love is that? You know, He loves us tremendously. Don't miss out on true freedom. Don't miss it. Today is the day of salvation. By video, if you happen to click on this, today could be the first day of the rest of your life. Living the abundant life. Yeah. He wants you to have it. And by abundant life, I don't mean all kinds of money, riches, and glory and all that. No. That may come. Some people are, that's what God's destined for them, you know. But peace, mm -hmm. love, joy, happiness, you know. All the fruits of the spirits, money can't buy that kind of stuff. Amen. And God gives it to us freely. So accept it today. Accept what God has in store for you. He wants you to have it. Let's pray. Father, we love you so much. We thank you for your goodness and your grace. And we thank you, Lord, that you give us this great opportunity to come before you and, and to learn about your goodness and your grace and to hear the message of Jesus telling us that we must be forgiven and that the opportunity is there for us to be forgiven of our sins. We don't have to carry the burden anymore, Father. Thank you for relieving us of that. Father, as this word goes out, we pray that you would touch those in, on the internet that, that could stumble across this video today and, and uh, touch them by your Holy Spirit. Let them understand that you have a great love and concern for them. That you're not being judgmental towards them for the choices that they make, but you're being loving and kind and compassionate towards them by showing them a better way. You showed it to us, Father, and for that we're truly grateful. We thank you so much for loving us, Father. We want to bless your holy, holy name. And Father, we want to give opportunity this morning for, for the church uh, to come today. We're going to just play this song for just a little while longer. We're going to give an opportunity for those to come that want us to agree with them in prayer. So if you have, if you have something on your heart, something on your mind, uh, an illness or something, you want us to lay hands on you for a recovery from sickness, whatever it might be, we open up this, this altar to you today. So you come if you would like to. We'll do it for a few minutes here.